welcome to 2020 Design Trends by UXPIN. Uh, today on our short interview, I'm joined by Adam all the way from Portland. <laughs> Portland, Maine. Just have to like caveats, Portland, Maine. A lot of people think I live in Portland, Oregon. I live okay. on the other coast. Yeah. <gasps> sorry, sorry for that. My mistake. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, but you can you can tell us more about yourself then. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thanks for having me. Like I'm super stoked to be here. Um, currently, I am a designer at at Cisco, previously at Microsoft and other companies such as Amazon. Uh, I got to work for a cool little startup in Kenya for a little bit, building uh, cook stoves. That was a, lot, that was a blast. Um, but at Cisco right now, I work on a centralized creative team, and our goal is to help you know evangelize the brand, build in um, you know cohesion across our design language, evolve our design language, as well as um, I'm really involved in uh, scaling and evolving our current design system, Momentum. So that's that's where most of my day is spent. Okay, cool. Um, design systems uh, are, you know, like uh, maybe it's not a trend because we're supposed to talk about trends for 2020, but I think it's something that more and more uh, companies, not, uh, just, not specifically like enterprises, are looking into. Do you, would you say so? Yeah, I think design systems are still a little niche. Um, I think like they're talked like in the design bubble. I think they're really popular and they're seen seen as common. But like, if you go and engage with other disciplines, like in a in a product team or you know at an organization, I think they're still really new. And I think a big thing is is the value that they bring, right? Like, how do you quantify and create qualitative uh, results for like a visual language? I mean, yeah, you can say that like it speeds up a designer or it like builds more coherence, but like from a customer's point of view or like a user, like are they feeling the ramifications? Like are they seeing the improvements in the experience? Like does it make your product more delightful? Like in those cases. So yeah, I think it's it's a total trend like in design. I think you're, you're also seeing like um, other, you know, organizations think about a design, like in terms of design thinking, I don't love that word, but, um, <laughs> It's it's something that's it's still relatively new. So I could totally see it like being a trend in 2020, like more, you know, small to enterprise scale organizations really buying into it. Yeah, exactly. And there's uh, even like this role of uh, design ops or like stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do you totally. Yeah. Design ops is huge. Um, like producers, design, you know, design ops, um, PMs like those organizationally minded like the systematic minded individuals like that is so important to be able to take something that's whether it's a design system or a product and like manage it through its life cycle and make sure that like when you're at a company like cisco right like there isn't just one design team right there's several and so like designers and and you know other disciplines have day jobs and they go and do those things and like are they are they really taking the time to connect the dots across the organization um, maybe, you know, maybe not, but like, that's where operations can come in and like really bring the picture that we all believe in that is this like one system, like rules at all or fits all kind of idea and make sure that like we're moving in a direction and scaling it appropriately for everybody. Yeah. So do you think, uh, like, uh, speaking about, uh, design job landscape, do you think that other than design ops, there's something emerging maybe? Uh, I think, you know, like the design like dot something is, is, has been like a trend for a really long time, like mm -hmm. design user experience, design visual design, like in terms of T-shaped design, like I think T-shaped is going to be more uh, a trend in, in 2020 than like a design specific is like I can uh, focus across several areas and be really good at, at one thing. Um, design technologist is one that's, I think, you know, becoming more and more popular as you see um, engineers getting more excited about design and, and going and, and taking classes and getting educated and fitting into those roles and vice versa. You know, designers that want to have a little more control, you know, in their in their product or the impact in their product or help, you know, bridge the gap like in a design system, right? Like engineering resources is always something that is hard to find. So if, if a designer can take it to that next evolution of it, then it's just easier um, for that those types of hands off. But like an outside of design, I'm not, I'm not really, 
I'm not really sure, you know, because I, I interact with designers all day. So it's like, it's hard to say, like, maybe just design, right? Just designer will be the trend. Like, there'll be no, nothing else. Like, oh, yeah. just designer, right? Like, I, I'm just a designer. Like, I'm not a visual designer. I just, I do, I can do a little bit of everything, you know, or I like to think I can at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's very funny that you say that because most of the designers that I talk to, like, in the, these interviews, they're saying that um, the jobs are going to be more and more niche and people are going to be more and more specified in their fields. So that's very interesting that you have like totally opposite view for that. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I think the work, I think the work is going to be niche, but I think in terms of like the interpretation or like what I call myself or like what another designer calls themselves is not going to be so like microscopic, right? It's not mm -hmm. going to be like, I am a designer who builds micro experiences for blockchain this on this platform and like over here, right? Like right. it's just like, I'm a designer, you know, because it, it gets too like, it gets too com like computer speak. It gets like human, like or out, it gets non-human. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think that's really important like for designers to like maintain that, like that empathy and that human side of what we do because we are so close to technology now yeah. and like, and how we get immersed in it and engage with it. It's everywhere. Yeah. Well, uh, you mentioned like uh, design technologists and now you, you talk about uh, the technology that is coming into uh, the design world. So um, I'm hearing about like computational design and mm -hmm. AI designing stuff like, more and more like very important stuff and uh, right. what do you think about that is it really coming in 2020 or 2020s i think so i mean i feel like we were like it's starting to kick off with you know a lot of the tools that are available today like releasing apis so that like mm -hmm. you know designers or engineers can go and build tools for their discipline right to improve their workflow um and because of that i think you're going to see uh roles change Right. Like because a computer can automate or an algorithm can automate or, or like we can automate some part of the, the workflow of design or research or engineering doesn't mean that like the, those jobs are going away. Right. Like they're just going to shift. Like, we're we're going to focus in different ways. Like we're going to create new areas of opportunity. And I think that's really exciting, you know, to say that like the, the uh, there's a little bit of unknown there, which for me, like embrace the fear, you know, like it, it, like, it sounds like fun. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't think I could put my finger on like what that would be as a trend. I think a lot of it is n not necessarily a lot of it. I think the biggest trend you're going to see is this translation of a uh, designer putting something in a tool and being able to like compute that out into a framework, whether it's like, you know, for Swift or React or, you know, all these other, you know, mm -hmm. technology frameworks. I think that's going to like, that's going to be uh, like a big trend in 2020 or the 2020s yeah, yeah, is yeah. being able to translate that, like to maintain the design intent and in space all the way through the process. Yeah, well, um, I don't know if you heard about it, but uh, there's this in, uh, they, I think they installed a, a bridge in Amsterdam on the canal that was mm. completely fully designed by AI and 3D printed. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I saw it, and actually it reminds me, like, or of the design of by nature, or, like, mm -hmm. Gaudi stuff. It's not very, you know, like, architectural as we would think, right? Right. So, uh, that, that makes me think that, um, of course, like, AI is something that we have to still, like, explore, but also control a little bit, because mm -hmm. there might be some computational um, power that we maybe don't understand. <laughs> <that> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's, I think that like you, you, you hit the, the nail on the head there, right? Like there's, there's so much ethics and, yeah. um, you know, confidence and discipline that goes into building those types of, of things. Um, we'll never be able to think as fast as a computer until we have computers in our, in our head. Right. Um, and so like, if that's the case, how do we stay relevant and how do we teach whatever we're building to maintain our relevancy? That's like a whole Elon Musk tangent. We could go on there. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, Neuralink. And yeah. Like all kinds of goodness that we can yeah. dive into there, but it's, I think it's fascinating. Like, you know, mm -hmm. as a technologist, I think it's absolutely fascinating to, to dabble and think about those things and, and, you know, 
worry sometimes, right? Like, yeah. does it matter? Like, do we matter at, at any uh-huh. point? Like in the terms of like, if we're just going to let, you know, robots or the terminators of the world take over and, and do things for us, like, what do we become? The, the, the Wally, the wall, I call it the Wally effect, right? Like we're on a yeah. spaceship and we just like sit in these chairs and they feed us and change our clothes. And it's like, do we want to be designing for that? Like, is that something that do we want to design towards that? Or do we want to like build in a, a block where we can be like, okay, we've gotten, we're, we're too close to it. We're uh-huh. too close to becoming that. Right. So like, how do we work backwards? Yeah. But you know, on the other hand, there's uh, this whole new, uh, I don't want to say trend, but if like, uh, w- uh, since we're talking about trends, let's, let's call it a trend of uh, inclusive design and you know like um, being more human in designing like not uh, calculating every business decision when you're designing Mm -hmm. but you know like focus on on uh, very little small issues that might be like even for one user that's still you know like good to acknowledge that right yeah, I think it's huge. Uh, you know, you're seeing uh, accessible and inclusive design really take off like 2018, 2019. Um, you know, there's companies that are really investing in like really powerful ways on, on all ends of the spectrum from hardware to software, um, which is awesome to see. Um, as designers, I, I think inherently because we're visual creatures to begin with. So we tend to focus on the things we can see. And that's why you see um, vision impairment is like a big focus uh, in that area uh, in terms of designing for those types of things. But there's so many other, you know, uh, disabilities and abilities that, that, that exist in the world, whether it's mobility, vision, you know, hearing and so on. Um, it, it's a, it's, it's another one of those areas where it's like, like, like artificial intelligence, right? Like it's an opportunity um, and not even an opportunity. It's more of like, we have to, because there's so many people in the world that get left out. And that's like in, in our world, you know, today, whether it's design or, you know, working at McDonald's or, you know, hustling on the street, like we're all human at the end of the day. So like, why not? Aff- like we should be affording for that as, as creatures of, of the earth. Um, and so it's, I think it's more, it's, it's probably more important than, you know, focusing on, those those other areas right because it's it's so close like it's so easily attainable right now right like it's a challenge right it's 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 a challenge to can convince you know stakeholders that like it's important so we have to do it from beginning right it's it's new uncharted territory territory for some organizations so like they're still figuring out like how do they uh you know accomplish those those goals but like it has to happen like it's something that has to happen right today uh accessible inclusive design it's not a like it's not a, we do a design sprint and like, oh, then we do another design sprint that like, now we think about, you know, inclusion or accessibility, right? Like it has to be built in, not bolted on. Yeah. It's like, it has to be built in. Like we can't just start bolting on accessibility as not the solution. By any means. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think uh, that it should become an evergreen trend. <laughs> totally. Yeah, totally. Uh, do you have like your favorite uh, emerging trend or something that you are l- really looking forward to in 2020? My favorite, um, I think my favorite is is seeing that gap from design intent, um, like putting something like in a tool and seeing the output and and being able to handle the outputs like in space. So like you know, not just building components and then an engineer goes and puts them together, but like uh, a system to be able to like spatially understand like where my design is in space and like output that. I think that that's something that like I'm really, you know, excited about and into um, right now. Um, another one is um, just like open design culture. It's like designers in the past, like freelance or, you know, working at startups or large organizations, there's always been this like ownership of its mind, which is special, right? Mm-hmm. right? To like, build something like as a designer but like I think we run into like in the world like all these silos of design and then like nobody can agree on anything or like focus Mm -hmm. and like that's where design systems come in it like helps break down those barriers but like even further outside of that um, you know open design culture in terms of like knowing how to critique and like this idea of like nebulous feedback like removing all those barriers to like truly build something that's great not just like we're building a product, right? Like we're all in it together. I know that sounds like super fluffy and like blue sky, but like that's just like the human being that I am. And I think it's really important. It's more important to like be able to trust the person next to you uh-huh. than to be able to like 
compete or be like, they're good at what they do. Like if they're not as good as you, or if they're, you know, if you think less of them in any way, like you still have to work with them. So like build them up, build the trust, like, because at the end of the day, you and all the rest of the people around you are like pointed in the same direction or at least should be right. And Mm -hmm. that's super important to have to to lean on people next to you. Um, So I'd say like, yeah, my two open design culture um, and the being able to like output or um, build design intent, like in, in some, in some technology framework is would be awesome to see. Yeah, so like bridging the gap between design and development, which is basically you experience like mission. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it's whoever's doing it, like everybody's going to do it a little bit different, which is yeah. which is fun, right? And um, each side of the coin wants to have more ownership, right? Like if you yeah. talk to designers, like they want the control. If you talk to engineers, like they want the control, and like. Yeah, unfortunately, like, sorry, designers, like, out in the world, like, engineers have to build the thing unless you're going to go and build it. So, like, ultimately, like, they'll figure out ways to have more control because they'll think about it, like, first in that manner. Um, so, so we got to catch up, right? Like, we got to catch up. Yeah, but if you, like, switch off the, the way, this way of thinking, like, it's mine and I, I need to control it to more, like, we are a team and we're building this to the, together, that might be, you know, like, make the work more smooth right yeah yeah i mean totally like i love it that you just threw my previous point like right back in my face yeah. um yeah no i think that's i think you're totally right you know i've been maybe a little close-minded in that last statement but um <laughs> but totally yeah well i was trying to agree with you <laughs> no you were agreeing with me i disagree with myself which i thought was like and at the end of this it's hilarious right that you're like hey wait a second didn't you just say and it's like yes i did i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah well thank you very much adam for joining our interview uh thank you for our, all your insights and uh, everything um and uh i hope uh well i'm i'm sure that uh all the things that you said were very inspirational inspirational for our community and that we will get a lot of comments <laughs> yeah i hope so i hope so uh, this is a lot of fun and uh you know Looking forward to hopefully, you know, staying in touch and doing more of this in the future. Yeah, yeah, let's stay in touch.